Welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Kurzgesagt. They just released a new one a day ago or so. It is the next pandemic will be man-made. I think this is a very interesting topic. A lot to say on this one. A lot of uh, touchy points to talk about with it. But let's go ahead and dive right in. A breathtaking scientific revolution is taking place. Biotechnology has been progressing at stunning speed, giving us the tools to eventually gain control over biology. It has been very On the one scary. Hand, solving the deadliest diseases, while also creating viruses more dangerous than nuclear bombs, able to devastate humanity. And the information is widely available to everybody. Capability. Biotechnology is increasingly everywhere. The mm -hmm. cotton in your clothes, the vegetables you eat, your dog. Humans manipulate living That's things. a scary dog. <laughs> we use bacteria to produce insulin, connect prosthetics directly with our brains, and make industrial enzymes to produce paper. Gene therapy creates cures to previously untreatable diseases while we're working on food crops resistant to climate change. It's our pretty amazing overall. Technology has been speeding up so much that within weeks of the first COVID-19 case, the unknown coronavirus was broken down in laboratories and analyzed. Scientists generated a copy of its genetic material to create a vaccine that was ready for testing months after the pandemic began. Yeah, that was crazy Something fast, to be fair. a decade ago. Where is all this sudden progress coming from? Well, it's complicated. It's a good but thing. But in a nutshell, really expensive things got cheap and knowledge of how to do impressive things spread freely. The Human Genome Project, starting in 1990, was the first major attempt to read human DNA in its entirety. It's a little bit of supply and demand, and right? $3 billion later, it was complete. By then, the cost of decoding a human genome had fallen to about $100 million. Today, it's 100,000 times cheaper, costing only about $1,000. What? How is that possible? How? Converting DNA into computer data and then studying it used to be a super tedious process, taking expert humans around That's crazy. Three years of manual work. About a thousand dollars? It takes about two weeks and is almost completely automated. That's Biotech insane. It's gone from something restricted to the best and well funded laboratories staffed by the world's top experts to something affordable enough for hundreds of thousands of people to casually work on. <laughs> what sped up the process even more is that information in the field is shared widely and freely. Yeah. Cutting-edge discoveries now take just about a year to be copied in laboratories around the world, a few years for anyone with a biology background to work out, and a bit over a decade for high school students to experiment with them in schools. That's Imagine scary. that your local computer repair shop could build a pristine iPhone 11 with just the parts lying around, and that teenagers are asked to build a new iPhone 5 for homework. Not a crappy hmm. homemade version, the real thing. This is what's going on right now in biotechnology. A true That's a revolution. good analogy, actually. We are adding knowledge at unprecedented rates, while things get ever faster and cheaper to do. This speed means we can expect even more wonderful things for humanity. And like scary things. Miracle crops and solutions to problems we can't even imagine right now. But unfortunately, progress cuts both ways. What can be used for good <laughs> can also be used for bad. That's so true. Or on purpose. What if you could build a nuclear bomb in your backyard? For all the good biotech will do for us, in the near future, it also could easily kill many millions of people. Mm -hmm. In the worst case, hundreds of millions. Worse than any nuclear bomb. Yeah, imagine if... just witnessed how fast the novel coronavirus... If, imagine if coronavirus had been way more deadlier, if it would have had a higher mortality rate. Think of how many people you know that actually got the coronavirus... And then think of how many people you know that got it multiple times. Imagine if that had like a 50% mortality rate or an 80%, you know, that would be insane. Spread. We still don't know for sure if it came from nature or was the result of an accidental leak from a lab working with coronaviruses. That's still subject to scientific debate. In mm -hmm. the end, at least 7 million people died. And this was still wow. a relatively mild virus that didn't cause serious disease in most of those infected. Yeah. But that might change in the future. Wherever the last pandemic came from, the next one might very well be our own fault. In a sense, many things going on in biotechnology could lead to this. Most of all, how easy it is to work with dangerous viruses. Thousands and it's of so readily available the online. the data of infectious virus samples online to experiment with them. Assembling these into an artificial virus in 2023 
costs about as much as a new car, including all the lab equipment. Jeez. At the same time, other scientists are trying to find viruses that hide in nature, like in wild bats or monkeys. There are probably plenty of potentially deadly pandemics out there. What's Virus stopping a terrorist organization from to doing learn this? Whether the newly discovered viruses Nothing. are likely to spread in humans and catalog the danger. When a biologist discovers a new virus, they usually publish its genetic data to the public. Journals are eager to share descriptions of potentially dangerous viruses. Other labs go further and make viruses more dangerous. They combine and mutate different viruses Why? <laughs> to understand which mutations make them more likely to spread between humans or make them deadlier than their original forms. And again, these results are shared freely. And some All people just want to watch DNA the world and burn. To rebuild these viruses are sold online to anyone without any or very little tracking. Wow. As the tools of biotechnology get ever cheaper and easy to use, it's like we're just asking for it, you know? Keeps multiplying, it's only a matter of time before a well-meaning scientist shares blueprints for the equivalent nuclear bomb of viruses, a superbug that will cause millions of deaths, and someone uses it. Maybe yep. because they have bad intentions, maybe because they're irresponsible or sloppy. We're creating an environment in which it's increasingly easy for anyone to create a weaponized virus in their backyard. This is scary. The world would be plunged into an unending crisis as new pandemics pop up year after year or all at once. And we saw how awesome we handled the last doing one. Unimaginable damage to civilization as a whole and possibly undoing centuries of progress. What can we do? Turns out a lot. It's but not will the first we? time we face will we though? like this and we are not helpless. Think of nuclear technology, something extremely powerful and dangerous with huge upsides and downsides. Nuclear energy was born from weapon programs, so its creators were always aware of the potential for their knowledge to be abused. From mm -hmm. the very beginning, it was clear that knowledge in this field and access to the technology needed to be handled with utmost care. So a lot of effort has gone into making sure no radioactive material disappears from sight or that countries don't try to hide weapons development behind energy programs. The result hasn't been perfect, but considering the 411 nuclear power stations running today, we've been very successful. Yeah. Likewise, no researcher would think to share data on how to turn common laboratory equipment into bomb-making machines on the internet. <laughs> There's no reason we couldn't handle the really dangerous aspects of biotechnology Wait, was that the, in a similar uh... way. Oh god, we gotta Experts check that. Come handle the radi that was the second time they showed it, but was that the, the Umbrella Corp logo? There's no reason we yes. couldn't handle the really dangerous aspects <laughs> of biotechnology in a similar way. Experts have come up with three sort of bullet points. First, we need to delay the next deadly pandemic by getting a grip on how we treat dangerous viruses. Their genetic data should be treated as an info hazard. Yes, Information absolutely. Information that poses a danger to society if it's shared without care. Not just posted words, all over the internet for anyone to find. Dangerous DNA online. And if you do, uh. you should be tracked, so it becomes much harder for the wrong people to access the really spicy stuff. Yep. The next step is detecting the danger by becoming aware which viruses are present among us and are spreading explosively between humans. This could be as easy as having labs in population centers maintain virus detectors that monitor what's going on in the micro world. Hmm, that makes if sense. If we suddenly see certain microorganisms show up a lot in a short time, we can react quickly and start countermeasures. Which is the final step, destroy. We basically no. need to build a machine that's ready to destroy any pandemic threat before it has a chance to take over. How? We can do this with new tools that are being developed right now, like nanofilters that pull dangers out of the air we breathe, or specialized UV lamps that just kill any virus before it has a chance to jump from person to person. Hmm. And of course, we need to get better at getting new vaccines faster than ever before in history. Yeah, that's true. It and we need to educate the population on exactly how vaccines work and what the risk versus the reward is and undo years and years of damage that have recently been done. Yeah, that's probably the, the, the most important step is the education aspect of it. If we do these three things, the chances are really good. I'm that bumping my camera all over the place. <laughs> the Biotechnology, like any exciting and powerful technology, is neither inherently good or bad. It has the potential to be both in yeah, That's how you ways. use it. We have the chance to have a future where we get to truly control biology. Our biology. The biology of the plants and animals around us, and the biology of the micro world. Mm -hmm. So let's use it to create a future where we triumph over pandemics and diseases for good.
This video was supported by... It was a great video. I absolutely love it. I think that the biggest disagreement that I have was with their steps on how to address the problem and how to fix it. I think that the biggest problem that we have... Well, let me rephrase that. The biggest problem we have, in my opinion, that we have to address right now in the immediate term is education. Just, I don't know how else to put it. We've had a lot of damage to the public image of what vaccines are and how safe they are and what they can and can't do and everything like that. We've had a lot of damage over the last few years with that. And we have to undo that. That's going to take some effort. That's going to take some time. But also, the points that they brought up were very important. It needs to be treated as an info hazard because, plain and simple, it is one. You shouldn't be able to go out and just download instructions on how to build a deadly virus. Why should I be able to go online and download the DNA for the Black Plague? There's no good reason. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, please hit a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.